after 39 years of waiting for answers in the case of Judith Chartier, investigators finally had a breakthrough. Judith Ann Chartier, at just 17 years old, headed off to a party on June 5, 1982. Summer had just begun and Judith was ready for it. She was working in a fast food restaurant and making some money, and her boyfriend, Roger Balcom, had just proposed. Judith eagerly accepted. Judith went to the party on June 5th, but would never be seen or heard from again. Roger had left the party earlier that night as he and Judith had a fight. He had no idea where Judy went or what happened. Her family was heartbroken, especially her parents. Several theories would come up over the years, but still, no, Judy. It would be this year, however, when there would finally be some answers. And it wasn't the way most people believed they would come. On November 2nd, 2021, investigators discovered Judith's car in the Concord River, just a half mile from where she was last known to be. Do we know what happened to Judith Chartier now, or is this just the beginning of an investigation into how she ended up in that river? Judy was my best friend growing up. I mean, her and I did everything together. Hello and welcome to this bonus episode of the Where Are They podcast. The voice you just heard is the voice of Joe Chartier, Judith's brother, a man who has waited for so many years to find out what happened to his sister. I'm not labeling this a solved case yet either, as there are still some answers that law enforcement is working on. However, we can definitely acknowledge that this is a huge, huge breakthrough. In this missing person's case, almost 40 years in the making. Judith's episode on our show went up on May 5th of this year. A cold case with very little clues, evidence, or updates over the last 39 years. So it's pretty incredible that here we are, just six months from publishing that episode with a major break in the case. Judith had disappeared along with her car on June 5, 1982. On November 2nd, her car would be found in the Concord River near Billerica, Massachusetts, just a half mile from the party she had been attending that night. The very next day, November 3rd, authorities announced that they tentatively identified the remains found inside the car as those of Judith Chartier. Since it's been about six months since we aired her case, let me give you a quick rundown. On June 5th, Judy, who lived in Chelmsford, Massachusetts, went to a party with her fiancé, Roger, in Billerica, Massachusetts. At the party, they had an argument, and what's been said about that is that Roger was jealous as there was another boy there flirting with Judy. Judy ended up driving Roger home that night, but then would return and go back to the party by herself. What happened after that has been the mystery. There were a few theories that came up in her case over the years. First, there was the fact that Judy's parents learned of her disappearance from two young men who knocked on their door the day after the party and asked if they could help in the search for Judy because they knew she was missing. Judy hadn't been missing 24 hours yet, and in fact, her parents weren't even sure that she was missing. She just hadn't come home from the party. Those two men caused major concern for the family and law enforcement, but nothing was found to indicate that they ever knew more than they were saying. The same day that Judith was reported missing, the body of missing teenager Brenda Lacombe was found nearby, and many people said that Brenda and Judy knew each other. So speculation would develop that their cases were related. 
Later on, a man would be arrested for sexual assaults on several young women matching Judith's description. He was also confirmed to be in the Bilraka in Chelmsford area at the time Judy vanished. This man, James Mitchell de Bartleben, known by Mike, became a person of interest, but again, nothing became of it. In 2012, bones were found in the backyard of a home that had once belonged to the Chartiers. The family was hopeful they would finally be able to put Judy to rest properly. However, those bones were found to be animal bones. Shortly after that, a woman named Val would call the family and say she knew what happened to Judy, but was afraid to say anything as her life had been threatened. When Judith's brother, Joe, tried to track down Val so he could speak to her himself, he was unsuccessful. It would be many months before he would, but he would be too late. Val had taken her own life. Her last name was never made public, and no one would ever know what Val meant by her phone call to the Chartier family. The police had always labeled her case as suspicious, and it was classified as a non-family abduction. And despite that ruling, there were still several theories that had developed. Number one, Judy took off on her own. Number two, Judy met with foul play at the hands of a stranger that night. Maybe her car broke down and a passerby saw an opportunity. Or number three, Judy met with foul play at the hands of someone she knew, perhaps someone at the party. Or number four, a car accident. We know now that it was indeed some type of car accident. Or it was likely some type of car accident. So let's talk about how and why she was found after all these years. Bruce Stebbins, a local man living in Bilreka, has always remembered Judy Chartier's disappearance and always wondered what happened to that young girl. It was a mystery that baffled the entire town. Bruce, along with his friend, Hans Hug, who owns Sonar Search and Recovery, decided to take their equipment to the Concord River on August 21st and see what they could find. While they were aware of the Judith Chartier case, they weren't necessarily just looking for her. They were exploring the waters and looking to see what they could find. Hans has side-scan sonar equipment that he utilizes made by a company called EdgeTech, and Bruce owns a remote-operated vehicle, an ROV, similar to a drone that is made to go underwater. On that day, August 21st, Hans and Bruce located four cars in the Concord River, specifically near Bilreka. Now, this isn't necessarily that uncommon. If you are interested in this type of search in the process... Check out the Adventures with a Purpose YouTube channel. They take their equipment all over and help search bodies of water for missing people. And they are always finding multiple vehicles that have been dumped in rivers and lakes. So Bruce and Hans would spend the next few weeks working to get a clear view of the cars in the river. Remember, this water is murky and full of vegetation. So searching rivers like this can be a process. In September, at the request of the Chelmsford police, who had heard what they were doing, they went out to search again. This time, they believed they identified one of the vehicles as being a Dodge Dart, the same type of car Judy had been driving. They were astonished and in shock. They just had a feeling they had found her car. On November 2nd, Hans suited up in his dive gear and entered the water. He wanted to get a closer look at this vehicle, and he did. And in doing so, he was able to identify it as Judy's. Hans and Bruce immediately called the state police, who came out to verify and continue the investigation. They were able to retrieve a panel of the car, which had the VIN number still intact. And sure enough, the car they found in the Concord River was that of Judith Chartiers and had likely been there since June of 1982, over 39 years. The police also recovered items of Judy's, including a work badge and ID. 
clothing, and other personal belongings. Judy's remains were also found in the vehicle. The remains were identified via dental records within one day. Judy's parents had since passed away, as did a couple of her siblings, but her brother Joe is happy to have answers and finally be able to put Judy to rest properly. So we now know where Judy was, but do we know how she got there? Law enforcement says they do need to investigate further. The part of the river in which the car was submerged was about a half mile from the location of the party where Judy was last known to be. And the land and structure there has said to have changed a lot in the last 39 years. So they will need to work to re-examine what the place looked like in 1982 to figure out how the car may have ended up where it did. District Attorney Marion Ryan's office and the chief medical examiner are working with a forensic anthropologist to reconstruct the remains in an attempt to determine a cause of death. Law enforcement also has opened the case and are re-interviewing people who were at the party in Bilreka that night. Now, I checked out the map to see what the area looks like today and if there are spots where a car could go off the road and into the river. It hasn't been confirmed, at least publicly, if there were drugs or drinking going on at this party, but Judy did leave at 2 a.m., so it was dark and it was in the middle of the night. The party was allegedly on Wilson Street in Bilreka, and Wilson Street runs literally right along with the Concord River, but with houses in between the road and the water. Depending on how she went home, she would have turned off Wilson onto another road, which also crosses the Concord River. We don't know the exact location of where the car was pulled out, but we do know it was about 0.6 miles from the party house, not too far. Could this be as simple as a car accident and all of those theories or people of interest had nothing to do with her disappearance after all? Or did something more sinister happen that led to Judith and her car going into the Concord River? Truthfully speaking, we may never really know. But hopefully, as experts perform an autopsy to the best of their abilities, we may learn more. District Attorney Marion Ryan says they will continue to process the car and look for any clues or answers that might lead them to what happened that night. Acting Bilreka Police Chief Troy Opland said, quote, We are grateful to all of the people working hard on behalf of Judy Chartier. We look forward to working with all parties to bring justice in this case. End quote. The cold case unit will continue investigating this case. They claim it was never closed. And it had been on the minds of law enforcement since it happened with many retired officers stating it was the case that bothered them the most throughout the years. So now we know. We know where Judy was and likely has been for 39 years. And this gives me hope for other cases. Again, if you're interested in the water searches conducted and the process that occurs to make them happen, check out the Adventures with a Purpose YouTube channel. Those guys do great volunteer work and help out families as much as they can. Thank you for tuning in to this update episode of Where Are They? It's super sad that so many members of Judy's family have passed on, but her brother Joe is grateful for answers and thankful that the community continue to care for and search for his sister. Remember to follow us on social media for other updates as we get them. We will be back again with another episode of Where Are They? And until then, stay safe and hug your loved ones.